Every time the Earth moves violently, which happens pretty often, there's a strong possibility of you seeing a UFO, a ghost, or what have you. Now, we're not saying that the earthquake somehow creates a supernatural being, but there is a Canadian scientist, Dr. Michael Persinger, who has put forward a theory that when the Earth shakes, strange things happen to your mind. If this theory is to be believed, it would be easy to explain why ghosts are seen in England, dragons in China, and UFOs in our very own neighborhood. Dr. Michael Persinger of Laurentian University in Sudbury, Ontario, is on the line. Barbara? What's your view of uh, earthquakes and what they do to us? <laughs> I see. You mean earthquakes per se or uh, some of the uh, phenomena associated with earthquakes? Are there phenomena associated with earthquakes? What are they? Well, for example, if we take more of the more blatant direct ones, such as the actual movement, uh, I think those effects are, are self-evident. However, what we've been working with here are the effects of seismic stresses that occur before earthquakes or in earthquake-prone areas. And some of these effects um, take place on our electrical level uh, beneath the soil, and they can produce a number of different things like uh, luminosities and uh, electromagnetic disturbances, which some people may interpret as unusual observations or sometimes even UFOs. For example, what do they feel like? What do they look like? Well... Let's take a standard type of electrical, electrical event that occurs before earthquakes. In 1971 and 1972 in Groznoi in the Soviet Union, uh, 24 hours before a severe earthquake, there was uh, lightning displays, but there was no storm going on. In other words, there were electrical discharges going on uh, in the air, different colors, and it was very, very colorful. Um, and, of course, then sometime later the earthquake took place. This so-called earthquake lightning has been seen in many places of the world. But let us assume that the area is earthquake prone, that is, there are stresses beneath the soil, uh, pushing rock together, putting tremendous stress on rock. Well, then on the surface, you will get um, electrical fields generated, which can ionize the air locally and produce a luminous glob or a luminous glow. And this can be interpreted by the human observer uh, as perhaps a UFO or some other type of unidentified object. Have you seen one of these globs? No, but uh, similar things have been photographed, both um, in the laboratory analogy of such an event as well as in nature. Um, again, Would they have the erratic movement that people report with UFOs, you know, the stopping, starting, hovering? They certainly would. It would depend primarily upon the movement of the substructure sources, that is, the uh, beneath the soil as the stresses on the rock change depending upon a number of local factors. Uh, the ionization certainly would change also, move to and fro, depending again upon the geophysical forces. Could explain the soundlessness of UFOs, but how about the spread of sightings all over the world, all over Canada? We don't have earthquakes. Well, no, we do not have, we do have earthquakes, uh, but uh, not as frequent, for example, as some of the areas around the Pacific uh, Circle of Fire, like Japan and the west coast of, of North America, like Vancouver and California and so forth. But we, we are in areas which are earthquake-prone. For example, running up the St. Lawrence Valley, this is an earthquake-prone area. Uh, just because you do not have an earthquake uh, does not mean you do not have stress beneath the, beneath the soil. Uh, typically, when an earthquake takes place, that means the stress has been relieved, at least momentarily, because of the fracture. But there can be periods, um, days, even weeks before an earthquake, where the uh, fractures build, uh, the stresses build up, and consequently, you can get all these forces uh, manifested on the surface. What other, what other effects could they have on people? Well, with a high voltage field, which certainly seems it can take place. For example, just before the last uh, Hilo earthquake in uh, Hawaii, the ionosphere momentarily disappeared for about an hour or so before the quake, which means there are tremendous electrical fields being generated before the fracture took place. Well. Those kinds of fields can certainly influence human beings in the sense that if we, in a laboratory, we expose humans uh, to these kind of fields or to currents which typically would be induced by these fields, you can get paralysis, uh, feelings of foreboding, uh, dreamlike states, um, and a number of um, old peripheral effects such as actual stimulation of the visual cortex and the sensation of seeing blinks of light. Um, it's interesting that the most unstable part of the brain, 
uh, would allow the person to be inundated with all kinds of visual images. Uh, this, again, can be done in the laboratory or in surgery with these very low currents. What kind of visual images? Well, it depends. For example, if you stimulated the uh, visual cortex part of the brain, you could get what are called phosphenes or blinks of light, uh, which uh, when a person uh, experiences such an event, he has a difficult time evaluating where that particular blink of light is in the space in front of him. If, indeed, you stimulated the hippocampus or the memory storage area or gateway to memory, I should say, uh, of the brain, uh, the images could be quite realistic, quite visual, and quite detailed. Could look like a ghost. Well, uh, conceivably, I suppose under situations like that, uh, a person could interpret things in a number of different ways. If that were so, why wouldn't the effect be more general? Why wouldn't more people have a similar experience when uh, these phenomena are in sway? Well, put it this way. The what we call UFO phenomena is a single label, but the mechanisms involved are probably multifaceted, probably many different kinds of mechanisms. A person who is close enough to an object or to a glowing object to, to see it uh, may well be within the uh, sufficient field intensity to produce these effects. Now, if a person is further away, uh, certainly he wouldn't be influenced in the same way. I think it's interesting to point out that Many of the UFO reports um, are described as being changing glows, changing globs. The metallic type of reports are relatively very rare. And also, many people looking at the same object uh, may report different aspects of it or even completely different things, which suggest a marked individual variation in what's influencing them or what's uh, influencing the brain. Professor, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye-bye. Dr. Michael Persinger of Laurentian University spoke to us from Sudbury, Ontario.